So I'm going to cut it in half. Some people eat the papaya seeds, some people don't. I'm not really a big fan. And it's sort of you, the cantaloupe method. You just scrape them out. Papayas can be eaten underripe, called green papayas. You might see them in Thai papaya salads. Or you can eat them in fruit salads when they're more ripe, and that's how they're more commonly served in the United States. Either way, these would be considered ripe if I let them stay on my countertop a few more minutes. Actually, a day. Minutes would really work. So we have a clean papaya. They're great for putting chicken salad right in it, and this is a great serving piece. Fruit salad, same thing. Or you can make it as part of your salad. Keep one half for serving. Use the other half for inclusion in your salad. Okay, keep going. Cutting, chopping, tearing, so much fun. You can actually eat kale raw in your salad, especially when the leaves are small. For those of you who are on a raw plan or enjoy raw food. And almost finished. Terrific. Great. Now, we would typically make a full plate full. But I'm going to show you the idea. Good quality olive oil. Take your two fingers, squirt some over. Do your, oh, some people call it a massage. Some people call it tossing, whatever. I thought I'd show you Celtic sea salt today. What I like about Celtic sea salt is that it has the sea minerals in it. All it is is taken, the salt taken from, the dried from the uh, ocean water dried in the sun, and so the minerals are still there. You'll notice it's even gray. It's not a full white color. There's no iodine in it. And you don't need very much. I find it to be stronger. So I just use the tiniest bit, because salt and I, not the best of friends. I like it. It doesn't do the best things for me. So from there, we put it in a 400 degree oven till take a peek, you'll see the kale gets all crispy and kind of turns up and dries out and you'll know it's chip time. So remember to give those kale chips a try. It's a nice alternative to sweet potato chips, yucca chips, parsnip chips, carrot chips, and the old potato chip. So we're going to toast whole spices. Has anybody done this before? So we asked for cumin seed and coriander. And what happens is when you put it in and bring it with heat, it releases all the essential oils and it really imparts a strong and lovely flavor into your food. So basically I'm going to start with a whole onion, just to give you an example. If something calls for a slice, that's just what Anne did. These are slices. I call them smiles or their moons, you know, depending. Then from there, I guess I'm going to borrow yours, and forgive me because I do cry. We would have chopping would be like that. You always want, you can curl your fingers because then they won't get underneath the blade. So this would be a kind of a medium chop. It's kind of small. And then what you might see people do, I call it a rock and chop. What happens is when you start going to the mince stage, which are small pieces, if you go back and forth and you keep collecting it in a little pile, but notice where my hands are, there's no way, and this is great with children and older adults who have less control, because I feel safe with them away from the blade. <laughs> and my fingers are up, like that, stiff white peaks. So I had... Alexis, <laughs> I had Alexis move the egg whites from a smaller bowl because you want volume. And she was going to do it at the beginning and I suggested to wait until everything else was ready because just like a souffle, if you do it all and don't use it, it goes new, all the air goes out. Okay. Okay. Maybe. Ah, ah. The lens weighs more.